What's up guys, Jeff here with Grit City Fitness and Performance. And as we are going into the holiday season, one of the most common things that people experience is weight gain. Now, the average person gains between five to 15 pounds between November and December, right? So our goal here is to avoid that, but still being able to enjoy our holiday season with our family and friends, as well as enjoy all the awesome food that we're gonna be uh, put in front of us. So there are a few tips that I do have to help make sure that you don't gain an excessive amount of weight during the next couple of months. Now, one of the main goals here is not to just say, hey, don't gain weight because you're probably going to no matter what. All right. The goal, though, is to help regulate the weight gain and minimize the overall weight gain that you do experience. Now, if you really want to focus a little bit more, uh, I definitely recommend taking the time to work your diet up until the holiday season enjoy the holidays, and then go back onto your diet, all right? Uh, so a couple tips here to stay on track for the holidays, all right? The first tip I have is schedule your workouts like appointments. During the holiday season, we are oftentimes overwhelmed with things going on. We've got family obligations, people coming into town, traveling to and from areas, um, spending a lot of time shopping, all kinds of stuff is gonna start happening. So what you need to do is just like if you had a very important business meeting, work meeting, or anything like that, schedule your workouts like appointments. Put them in your, your journal, put them in your phone log, however you track your appointments or whatnot, put them in, schedule them in. Maybe this means that you aren't able to schedule as many workouts. You might not be able to do five times a week, but you can definitely schedule at least three. So I'd schedule in your workouts, just like appointments. This holds you uh, obligated to that appointment and makes sure that you do not book stuff over it. It takes a priority. Make sure that your workouts do take a priority instead of just saying, I'll do them tomorrow because I've gotta go do this other stuff. Set them as an appointment, all right? Tip number two. This more applies to the day of activities, but let's say we're at Thanksgiving dinner, and throughout the day, all I'm gonna do is do small workouts or movements. You don't need to go into a full sweat session every day that you have these binges or overindulgent days, but you do wanna do small workouts or small movements. When I say small movements, that means park your car further away, walk a little bit more. Instead of sitting all afternoon, Maybe spend your time walking around, standing, doing other things that are small movements or small activities. All right, I'd also do small workouts. Those are things like you could just do a Tabata. A tabata is a 20 seconds work, 10 seconds rest for eight rounds. You could just do that with squats maybe in the morning and then push-ups in the afternoon. And go through your day just doing these small, what I would consider micro workouts, but will help you burn calories throughout the day. So instead of sitting and doing nothing, do small activities, all right? From there, Tip number three, eat normal most of the day. So let's look at Thanksgiving. Most, more often than not, Thanksgiving dinner or brunch is consist, considered one meal. What I would then do is try and eat normal in the morning and the midday leading up to the event. So if I know that I'm gonna go to my family, family's dinner and it's gonna be at six o'clock and we're gonna be eating at six o'clock, I try and cons, uh, con, uh conduct my day as normal as possible. I'd eat my normal meals, I'd try and eat my healthy on point macronutrients, I'd try and eat my calories for the day up until then. That way you eliminate the overindulgence of sitting around waiting all day, starving, and then just chowing down a lot more excessively than you normally would. This will help you kind of stay more on track. Tip number four, drink more water. Water is going to be something that helps keep you a little bit more full. It's going to fill your belly. It's going to make it a little bit harder to consume excessive amount of alcohol, excessive amount of food, because you're going to feel a little bit more full overall. All right? So pretty simple tip there. Um, from there, tip number five is eat a small meal before your big meal. So what I would do here is, let's say, again, I'm eating my main meal at 6 o'clock. I might eat a small meal at 4.30 or 5. Maybe it's going to be something like a couple ounces of chicken, maybe a little bit of rice, just something small. What I'm trying to do is put a little bit of padding in my stomach. I'm trying to get myself not completely hungry, but not completely full. This way, it actually helps block you from overindulging again, stuffing your face too much, and kind of regulating how much you actually eat. Because now, you're not going to be going into this meal saying, 
hell, I'm hungry as, as fuck. I need to eat everything. You're going to say, I'm a, I'm a little bit full, so I'm just going to kind of pick it, pick some things and eat just a little bit to try it all, right? So you're not overindulging now. From there, six, when you load your plate, load it with protein. Try and get a good amount of substance, uh, of your meal substance and food from protein. These are going to help fill you up, make you a little less hungry, and help make it a little harder for you to consume a lot of other items. So consuming more protein. Plus, protein is just more metabolic. So the more protein you have, the, the less carbs and fats you're going to be consuming. So it's going to be good for you. From there, eat for satiety, not fullness. So what this means is Eat to appease yourself and know that you had something, you tried everything. Because I know for myself, if I go to my grandma's house and I don't try everything, she's going to tell me that I need to. So I want to make sure that I can eat a little bit of everything, but I'm not trying to stuff myself, right? The old joke is I have to unbutton my pants at Thanksgiving dinner. If you feel that that's how you need to eat, all these tips are going to go out the window. Just make sure that you know that you're having a little bit of everything so you uh, make your, your family happy and you're not the person that everybody's asking, why aren't you eating? Um, and they're not giving you shit and wondering about your diet. This will help because now we're not going to, we're going to be enjoying everything, getting a little bit of everything, but we're not going to be eating ourselves until we stuff ourselves so much that we have to unbutton our pants. All right. From there, tip number eight, enjoy, right? None of these tips tell you to not take or consume or be part of the holidays. All it does is helps regulate and modify a little bit, right? So still enjoy the pie, still enjoy the mashed potatoes, still enjoy everything that is available to you. Just enjoy it, right? So do these seven other steps and then enjoy the hell out of what you do. So a nice way of enjoying food is to slow down how long you take to eat it. If I'm shoving a piece of pie in my face, I'm not going to get as much happiness, joy from this food. I'm also going to be hungry for longer. Uh, what I mean here is it usually takes the body about 12 to 15 minutes to realize that food has been consumed and starts to feel full. So if you pile high your plate, you could probably scarf the whole thing down in 10 minutes and you'd still feel a little bit full. That's why you'd go get seconds. Now, if I took my first plate and consumed it and tried to take my time, about 15 minutes or so, I'm going to become full. So while on one hand, I could have scarfed everything down and went from plate two, if I slow my food down, enjoy it, taste it, like it, I now get to enjoy the process. I get to enjoy the experience. I get to enjoy everything without the overwhelming desire to go get plate number two. Also, this just means enjoy what you're doing, right? Don't stress about the day. Don't stress about the bad stuff you're gonna eat or how many calories that, that piece of pumpkin pie is. Enjoy it. Tip number nine, get back on track. Don't let the holidays ruin what you've already been doing. Take that one meal and just know that it's one meal. It doesn't mess up or change anything else throughout the day. It doesn't change tomorrow. You don't have to over, uh, overwhelm yourself with negative actions because you had one enjoyable day, all right? Enjoy the process and do these other tips and then after your Thanksgiving meal or whatever holiday you're doing, get right back on track. So I ate that Thanksgiving meal with my grandparents at 6 p.m. today and tomorrow I get back on track, right? I'm right back on the horse. I'm not letting that one bad day overcome all the good stuff that I've done building up to this. So now I can continue my results. Now again, the goal is to always regulate body weight during the holidays, not to be that the, the average American who gains five to 15 pounds. But just know you might gain a little bit of weight the day of and day after holiday meals and experiences. And that's okay. But by taking these tips into account and utilizing them properly and implementing them, you will have a lot more success over the holiday season of staying on track with your workouts, staying consistent with your weight loss and goals, um, seeing the results that you want, as well as not gaining the excess weight and falling off track. If you have any questions, guys, feel free to comment below. I'm here to help you guys. Hopefully you guys can implement these and these make sense and you guys can see some great results and continued results during the holiday season while also enjoying the hell out of the time with your family, friends, food, and experiences.